Fayette, located on the Garden Peninsula at Snail Shell Harbor, was once one of Upper Peninsula's most productive iron smelting operations. When the charcoal iron market began to decline in 1891, the Jackson Iron Company closed its Fayette smelting operation. It is now a completely restored village including 22 historic buildings, museum exhibits and the visitor center which can be toured from May through October. This is a really beautiful little area. This is the old smelting town that was here. These are some of the old houses. We're on the back side of the town right now, so we just have a few of the scattered homes that have been left behind. A nice pathway that travels through here too. So it's easy to get to with the whole family and uh, it's a great place to be and a great place to see. The historic site is located in the Fayette State Park. Today, Fayette Historic Town Site is a living museum with many restored buildings. Visitors may walk through the buildings and learn about the life in Fayette during the late 1800s. Over 20 buildings are open, with restoration continuing on other parts of the town. Well, the Fayette State Park is a perfect place to bring the entire family. Not only do you have a nice state campground that's here, you also have the historic town site that you see behind me right now. And it's got some trails up here too. Not long trails, there's one that's maybe four miles. It takes about 40 minutes to get around the trail itself, but the view is where we're at right now. We're up on the Bluff Trail. If you were down on the town site, you would look across and see the high bluff. Well, we're on top of it at this point, and that's where the trail runs long here and then back in through the woods. So it's a great place to uh, bring the entire family into. Nice welcome center here, by the way, too, that you can go in and find out a lot of information about the area. The park offers approximately five miles of hiking trails. The trails are groomed in the winter for cross-country skiing. As you come along the trail, you're going to see all kinds of sights. Of course, if you out behind the camera right now is the bluff, which 100, 150, 200 feet high, I don't even know. And you look out onto uh, Lake Michigan. Over here, it kind of slopes uphill, and you'll notice at the top there's a lot of oak, uh, rock outcroppings that are up here that uh, had been worn away by water and wind and uh, some real sculpturing has been done. Okay, we stopped uh, mainly because we're rethinking our hike just a little bit. The sun is on its way down, it's getting to dusk now. I don't know how long it'll be before dark. Uh, also this trail, and you can see it out behind me how it uh, obviously is not being used much. And it could be a little tough to follow, especially at this time of the day. Even though we brought flashlights, if you come out, bring your flashlight with you. Uh, but I think we're going to go ahead and stay on the easier route, head back the other way. And remember this when you come out, if you've got uh, younger people with you, come out during the day. Uh, unless you're experienced, I wouldn't even come out here at this time of the night. So let's get going. The cedar is actually quite stunted it's probably very old but it's it what's amazing is how it takes so very little soil it seems to grip right onto the rock itself and it somehow stays alive I'm not gonna get any closer because I'm on a real downslope right here I don't know whether you can tell that and right where that rock is it drops off a couple hundred feet now the first thing you might think is okay why is there trees on the other side of it well what's happening is the trees will grow out of the side of that rock just like this and if you're standing over in the uh, historical site, you can look over at this rock wall over here and you'll see just exactly what I'm talking about. 